So, let's go onto the bed. This is free to move now. And for the bed, I just have four of these really long screws here. A spring and a lock nut. Not sure if I indicated lock nuts for the uh, hardware list, but if not, go ahead and uh, get some. You could go to Home Depot, buy a whole bag for less than a dollar. Or I think it's a dollar for the goodie bags. Or you might have some around. Uh, for the plants, I think they're supposed to be 440. What I'm using here is actually 632 because the ace by my place did not have them long enough. I needed them two and a half inch, I think, and the longest they had for 440 was two inch. So I had to go with the six, 640, 632, is it? So you basically just lock it down like this. Now this blue tape was just here to indicate position of the bed, this corner here, um, let's tighten this while we're at it, so the height of the bed, you're basically just gonna want it to just touch the bottom tip of the nozzle. That's the part of calibration, but I'll go further into that. I'll do a tutorial later on in the future. Once, you know, I get started with the plastic part. That way, everybody has all their stuff. Most of you that already have a 3D printer should know how to do the rest. How to make the connection, what software to use, and how to calibrate it. So there we go, our bed's on. This is our Y, our Z, which is this here, it goes up and down. This is our X. Um, this goes here. Uh, no, we're not done. We have the motherboard tray here. The tray with the motherboard on it. This is what it looks like. There'll be a link. Uh, if you click on the YouTube link in the description, there'll be a diagram, a wiring diagram for this. Um, power. I just put it to this female adapter here. Uh, the USB goes straight here. Uh, the reset switch, which is here on the board. I still need to wire it to this switch here so that way we have an external uh, push button switch to do the reset that way we don't have to take this thing out every time we need to push the reset button these are the ramps here go directly right on top of the board uh, extruder stepper for the extruder stepper for the Z stepper for the X or this is Y and stepper for the X you're going to use uh, polarized pins for the connection here. Uh, this is for the hot head, hot head resistor. This is for the hot head thermistor. And these are for the um, in stop switches. Uh, I'm not sure which exact it is, but the diagram will show you that. So that's that. And what we're going to do is. We're gonna finish off these wires here. We're gonna put it, push it through this hose connector first. Through this, through this wire. this 
Now we have all six wires through. The hose, which is supposed to resemble a hydraulic tube. This whole thing is supposed to resemble a robotic arm. And these holes are the hydraulic tube. Sure, I have a piece. Not sure, this is going to go through because I have a piece of heat shrink on the other end of the wire, on one of the wires. I might have to cut that. And it looks like I might just cut it real quick. Yeah. That's a lot easier. want it to do a hot bed, uh, simple, just bring the wires down through this, you might have to do another one of these holes, which is not hard, I got everything through here, everything is through, push it, screw this on, more slack from the green, yellow, red, and blue. Alright, that's good. This goes into the motherboard tray. First we're going to have to put it through this. Another hose connector. I believe there is one, two, three, four, five, six hose connectors. These are fairly cheap. They're under a dollar each. Linear bearings, those are under a dollar. The ball bearings, under a dollar. A lot of parts, but most of them are not expensive. And this just goes to the motherboard tray. Alright guys, sorry about that. Uh, the SD card ran out of memory there. For some reason there was only a 2 gigabyte one in there. Uh, here we go. So we just screw this on and from there we should be done. USB will go right in here to connect to your computer. Your DC or your power supply will plug right into here. I just used a laptop connector. This one is uh, 6 amps. Without the hot the hot head, I think it runs about maybe the most you need is probably about 3 amps for the for everything. About 3 amps for everything. Um, when I ran it with a voltage meter or an amp meter, uh, just using the hot head alone, it was probably around maybe 2 or 3 amps. While the steppers were running all access, were zoning home. Um, with the hotbed, I think we were running about 11 amps, so you'll be comfortable with uh, anything that is about 15 amps. 12 volt DC, 15 amps. Um, what I used when I had a hotbed was a Xbox 360 power adapter, one of those big power bricks. I think the newer ones are a lot smaller now. Uh, those, you can buy the generic ones, they're about, I think I've seen them, under $20, which is a very good price for it. Uh, so from here, you should be able to make your connections, uh, all your other wires here. Basically, once you make all your connections, the board will go in like this. And from there, you can make, I tap these screws, so... I'm going to have to screw those back in. Um, you can use sheet metal screws. Just drill the hole behind it a little bit smaller than the sheet metal screws and you should be able to just force that in. So that's not a big deal. 
so so far we went through everything. Uh, you don't need taps. A tap die kit. Um, yep, I think that's it. See you guys soon. You venture bot. And that's how you build one. There you go. We have our X, our Y, our Z, hothead. Uh, the hothead, yeah, I still need to do that. Simple. Uh, it's actually going to be an SKP file of uh, the diagram. But the parts for the hothead should be out there that you could purchase. Uh, the only hard part is probably the peak. But they have that available also. Uh, that's it. Hope to see you guys soon.